We're back everybody. In this video we are dropping the crank. I'm going to show you just a couple tips on some things I do before I install a crank. In the last video we sized up our main bearings so I'm just gonna, we're just going to jump right into it because we're ready to drop this crank in. The quicker we can get this crank in, the quicker this motor is going to be done. So we're going to set you guys up and explain to you what to do before we drop this crank in. First thing I'm going to do, because this is a new crank or even if it was a used crank, one thing I've always liked doing is grabbing brake clean and a straw and shooting it through your oil passages. So what I mean by that is what Kenny's doing right now is he's actually going through these oil passages and shooting out, making sure there's nothing left in there. On a new crank, I'm not expecting anything, but it is good practice to get through. On a used one, you might be able to shoot some like crudded up oil, but there's nothing coming out. So this is the first thing I always do. I always clean every oil passage. After I clean all the oil passages, what I am going to do is go over each journal with a, with a microfiber towel, or not a towel, but um, a cloth. Clean each journal, make sure it's good to go. Go over this block one more time. Make sure all of this is dry. There's no oil on this mating surface. The bearings are all clean, good to go. But you want no oil on here because we are going to be laying down a bead of RTV. All right, so with the crank all cleaned up now, block mating surfaces, those are all cleaned up for the final time because we are going to be putting down the Honda Bond to finally seal it. The next thing we're going to do is install the rear main seal on the back of the crank. I have a part number right here for you guys that is the that's the part number for the rear main seal so what I'm going to do is just put a very very thin film of assembly lube on the back of the crank about right all around here we're going to slide this seal onto it and then we're going to apply assembly lube all on our bearings very liberally on both sides so right here and right here as well we're going to be taking our thrust washers out, putting assembly lube on the back of the thrust washers. Then we're going to be laying them inside right here, which this would be, if you're looking at the, mo the motor, journal number four, they go in these little grooves right here on both sides. As you can see, there's grooves for it. And on the other journals, they don't have any grooves. So that's where those are gonna go. And then I guess the money shot, right? We're just gonna have a tripod dropping that crank in. Once we drop the crank in, then we are going to uh, put all of our assembly, our Honda bond, put all of that around, put the girdle on it, torque everything down for the final time. And then we're going to check the crank walk. Oh, 
so <laughs> after all the excitement we just had, we just ran into some bad luck. We're setting up the dial indicator. It fell out of its post and cracked, so it's Sunday. I can't really go out. It's kind of late. I can't get another one right now. I'm probably going to check the walk on this off camera, but, but, but I did check the crank walk on this or the crankshaft end play. That's what it's called in the manual. And I showed you guys how to do it in a previous video, which was in the disassembly video of my K20, K24. So I will leave that in the description if you guys are interested or not sure how to do it. It is the same way that we were about to do it right now. Just click that link as I'm disassembling the K series. I showed you guys how to check crank walk or crankshaft end plate. It's what it's called, crankshaft end plate. So I will leave that in the description. And that basically leaves us at the end of this video, I guess then, because that was gonna be the last thing. Crank is in there, it's good to go. Next thing we're going to do now is size up rod bearings. We're gonna install, uh, check that, if those are all good. Install the piston and rod assembly and the short block is all done. Those again will be other videos because I wanna break each series up so I can give you as much detail as I can. Otherwise, I'd be running through information too fast. And I know for me, when I'm watching videos, I wanna see every step and every detail that I can. So that's why I'm breaking them up into different sections, as short as they may be. I think some people want that extra information that I go through. So the next video, different information, probably sizing up rod bearings. And there will be a separate video showing you how to stretch rod bolts because that's the proper way on how to do it we'll leave it at this though kenny's got to answer the phone i'll catch you guys in the next video stay motivated and keep making those streets louder